instead of drums, something sounds like bongos. So I found a few of these and tried to play this pattern. You can hear strings coming in. The middle section goes A to G, with the bass doing E to G. So, and the bass, when I listen to it close, there's a snare drum that does that a couple times in this middle section. After that middle section, it goes into the three-part harmonies and the chords behind that. It's going G with the D in the bass, E minor, sixth, B minor, and an E with a D in the bass. Then you realize this is the same chord progression uh, as the verse, but it's moved up. Instead of playing it in D, we're playing it in G, so we've moved up a fourth. So it's G, D bass, E minor, sixth, B minor, and then an E with a D in the bass. Sing that, it's pretty high because we've moved up a fourth, but then it's right back into the original key. I mixed that short instrumental section together, everything but the snare drum, in the keyboard and then brought that in as one track. So that's on number two, and below that is the snare drum. Here's our drum track, and I've taken out a few sections. So let's listen to this part. Now there's a few more tracks down here that I have muted right now. Here's our little tick-tock and the bells. Let's see if you can hear those coming in. Okay, it's about to the second verse now, and we've got some strings and a cello down here. I'll take off the mute and then solo these two tracks. We can hear those. Okay, now it's time to do some vocals. And I've got this microphone cable going down to an adapter, an eighth inch mini plug again into the computer and plug my headphones in there. And then you wanna click right in the tracks right before you want to sing and it'll start recording right from that point. So um, we won't have to try to line this one up. When time shifted up and down the track, this should be right in sync with the rest of the tracks. Okay. I may not always love you. Yeah, no, it's not Brian Wilson, is it? But um, I'm hoping the software can save me here to some degree. Okay, here's the vocal track now, and when you're going to experiment with some effects, maybe you want to make some duplicates of the clip for comparisons, it's a good idea to start a new project so it doesn't get so cluttered in this one. And I can select this vocal and then go to Export Selection as Wave and open that into a new project. But I've already done this. Now I've exported this as its own file. It has a name, so I just have to go to File and Open, and that's how you start a new project. All right, let's play around a little bit with this now. I may not always love you. We'll zoom in. Before we do anything, let's get another copy of this in here. And we could go up to Project Import Audio, bring it in that way, or 
Once you've selected that track, you can go to Edit and Duplicate. Now, sometimes people will take two copies of a vocal and they'll move one just slightly, just offset them a little bit. That can give it a doubling effect. Let's get the Time Shift tool and we'll move the bottom one just a little bit. I may not well, that might be too much. Pull it back just a hair. How's this sound? I may not always love you. That's not too bad. Now we'll need to get our selection tool back by hitting F1, and I'm just going to drag across the first two lines on this clip on top. We'll go to Effect, and let's try the compressor. Uh, they've got a pretty good default on here, so I'm not going to preview it. I'll just hit OK. Now it does make it a lot louder, as you can see. I may not so always... need to take the volume down. One way you take the volume down over here with the, the slider, but that doesn't really affect the waveform. A better way would be not go to Effect and Amplify. This is just to turn the volume up and down with the waveform. I'll take this down to six or seven and... I may not right, always love you. we've got a pretty good volume on there with the compressor. Let's try Echo and preview this. I may not always love you. Well, that's not bad. The default on this is way too much echo. They have 1.0 for the delay time up top, and then for the factor, they have 0 0.5. This is pretty close to the default, and you can see what I mean. I may not I may always not love you. So you want to take that delay time down, move over a decimal. I may not always love you. All right, that's pretty good. What else can we do here? Well, let's go down to the, the second clip and we'll drag across those first two lines and they have phaser in their effects. And I've got just a little bit of phaser on here. I may not always love you. The default is more toward the middle on this slider. See if you can hear it now. I may not always love you. Well, maybe you like one or the other. Maybe we can put them together. Let's hear what that sounds like. I may not always love you. You've got to be careful not to overdo these effects. At some point, say enough, and then you can export these clips into one file, into one track, which we can then import into our other project.